this Jesse Smollett business or Smollett. Does anybody know what the real pronunciation is? I still have not heard the name pronounced. I've not. Well, I guess you're just going to have to forgive me if I get it wrong here. But you know what I find funny about this? You know what this is. This is this, this empire actor who's gay and black and hates Trump. And apparently his first hoax, I don't, and I can't understand this either. I, 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 forgive me, I've gone to three different media sources on this, and I still can't decipher. Apparently there was a letter sent to the studio where Empire is filmed or taped in Chicago. And it had letters cut out of magazines like the Zodiac Killer used to send stuff, like all these hoaxers do. And it had white powder in it. And so they had to call a hazmat guy, and it turned out the white powder was aspirin, ground-up aspirin. And it referenced the fact that Smollett is gay and black using slang terms. And he apparently got mad that the studio didn't react to that in a way that would create publicity for him in the show. Now, what I can't determine, and I apologize up front, I don't know if he sent that letter himself and that failed or if the letter is genuine and it failed. I can't tell. Three different sources I've read this, and I cannot determine the origin of that letter. Two of the things I've read make it look like he and his buddies might have sent that letter because the cops in Chicago absconded with magazines from these two guys from Nigeria, these two black guys from Nigeria, who, by the way, have opened up and, and told everybody what went on here. But this is far more serious than anybody is thinking right now, and I'll get to this in just a second, but the, the reason I'm thinking that Smollett is responsible for the letter is because the investigators took the magazines from the Nigerian guy's apartment from which the letters may have come that made up that letter. So Smollett, for some reason, either was being diminished on the series or just is poisoned with Trump hatred, which is why I think it is, wanted to try to create a publicity campaign, and that failed, and so then he orchestrated this fake attack using his two buddies from Nigeria. And I want to remind everybody the drive-by media, and I don't care how they're trying to weasel out of this now. They jumped on this like the proverbial white on rice. They didn't wait a moment like they didn't wait a moment on the Covington kids, like they didn't wait a moment that it might have been a Tea Party guy that shot up a movie theater in Denver, like they never wait. They jumped on this, the same media that believed everything Jussie Smollett was saying. Lock, stock, and barrel are the same media who constantly begin their reports. President Trump, comma, without evidence, comma, just said. But you never see Nathan Phillips, the frail Native Indian activist, without evidence, claims that no. It's a total one-way street. And I have seen, if I've seen one of these, I've seen ten. Why, why does the media keep falling for hate crime hoaxes? I mean, I've even said never Trumpers, never Trumper conservative intellectuals are wringing their hands trying to figure out why does the media keep falling for hate crimes hoax? Is it really that hard to understand? They're not falling for it. Well, I'll give you two options. One is... They're falling for it because they're dumb and stupid, ill-educated, combined with a condescending arrogance that they're better and smarter than everybody. And you put that together with the fact that they are 100% radical leftists, and that's how you get them believing this stuff. The other is that they're not stupid, per se, that they just have this narrative that this is what they think of us. That this is what they think of Trump and this is what they think of Trump supporters without evidence they believe. And so any time there is, why do you think these hoaxes keep happening? Because the people perpetrating the hoaxes know the media can be made fools of. Or they know the media can be used. But I think it goes deeper than that. I don't think they're falling for anything. 
I think they are attempting to make these things real. Even if they doubt or think that Smollett, in this case, is making it up, they're still going to try to make this story end up being real as far as the perception of the American people. It is exactly stuff like this, folks, that fuels the idea that America was founded immorally and unjustly and needs to be transformed, overthrown, remade, what have you. This is what they think America is. They're not falling for anything. They already believe this stuff. That's why it's dangerous who these people are and what they think, their lack of history education, their lack of genuine curiosity combined with their instructed and raised radical liberalism, it's a perfect recipe. It is why any allegation against a conservative Republican is automatically believed because the allegations come from other people like them who already believe these stereotypes. One of the... One of the articles I read went out and and talked to a so-called expert, a sociologist at at, at West Virginia University, a guy named Jason Manning, who has written a book, The Rise of Victimhood Culture. And the theory, his answer to this is that hate crime hoaxes are found in collective conflict perpetrators might not even think of them as false accusations, since in many cases they see it as an attempt to draw attention to a real problem. To the extent that modern society increasingly valorizes victimhood, claiming victim status through outright lies will become more attractive. Let me translate this for you. Remember the rape, the false, phony, totally proven, made up out of nothing rape story. At where was it? Virginia Tech. I forget. Where's a Rolling Stone story? And the babe that wrote the story, after having been completely humiliated, after having been completely exposed, refused to withdraw or retract the story because even if it hadn't happened as she reported it, it is happening out there. And her story was important to raise awareness and consciousness. But wait, you just wrote a pack of lies. Just like the Duth Cross case was a pack of lies. You just wrote a pack of lies about rape culture at an American unit. Well, it may not have been true there, but it's true elsewhere, and we need to raise consciousness about it. So these, even when you, when you nab, when you catch these people in the act of making it up, they're not making it up. They're not falling for it. They're advancing an agenda here. They're taking the occasion of any of these attacks or any of these events and using it to move forward the left-wing agenda that, quite simply, America sucks and needs to be fixed. And there's no amount of reparation, there's no amount of fixing, no amount of resolution, no amount of solution that will ever work because nothing can ever be done to erase the original sins of discrimination against blacks and women and whatever else you want to go back and recognize at the beginning of the country. And so it, from there descends the belief that this country is deeply flawed and not correctable. And so an event like this comes along and they rea- see, see, we told you, here we have this beautiful young talented actor and he's beat up by a couple of Trump guys. See, that's what they think America is. And now that it's been exposed, what's the media doing? Well, we never reported that. That was celebrities. That was TMZ. We were very responsible. No, you weren't. You weren't responsible about it at all. And you're disappointed it isn't true. Furthermore, you wanted it to be true. This is the country you think elected Donald Trump. This is the person you think Donald Trump is. Now, these, these, these buddies of Smollett... They went out there and uh, they, they, like he pays these guys $4,000 to stage the attack on him. 
He paid for the noose that they put around his neck. Which, you know, is a is a new twist on the old line about giving someone enough rope to hang themselves because this is exactly what Smollett has done here in the short term. You wait. This guy's going to end up being a hero because he's a victim. And victimhood, this guy, this sociologist is right about one thing. There is great valor in being a victim, especially if you're a victim of white Christian America. If you're a victim of make America great again type people, Man, there is valor in that. This guy is going to be back. He may not be back on Empire. They may write him off and get rid of him. The show may be canceled. The ratings of the show are in a tank. I used to watch this show. The first year, it was really worth talking about. Had a lot of buzz about it, but it just descended and descended. They ran out of plot lines because they ran through them so fast. And uh, they explored every potential character, which way everyone could go in the first two seasons. There's nothing left to do here but play out the string. But he'll be back. You wait. They're going to surround the wagon, circle the wagon's protected guy. They'll revive his career. And by the time they do that, uh, it'll all end up that it really happened. And he got screwed by the Chicago cops. It may take months for that to happen, but that's going to be the end result of this. Now, the red hats that they used, those were apparently bought at an uptown beauty supply shop. I don't know why Smollett and his guys couldn't even find a place where you could... Maybe you can't buy a real MAGA hat in Chicago. You ever think about that? Maybe there aren't any. And maybe there are, but where you have to go to get one. So they went to a beauty supply shop for the red caps. But here's the thing about this, folks. The really scary thing is... And fortunate thing here is not, it's not just Chicago. This whole country dodged a major, major bullet. Because it looked Smollett intended for this attack. He was angling to be Rodney King the second, folks. He was angling for this staged attack where he gets beat up, bleach poured on him, noose around his neck. He intended for that to be videoed by CCTV. Public cameras. Surveillance cameras. Fortunately for us and the country, the camera Smollett chose was pointed in the wrong direction. It's why there's no video of this, video of it. The, the guy is an idiot in his attempt to stage something to make him look like Rodney King. Can you imagine if he had succeeded? Can you imagine if ever since this, all that had been on TV was video of these guys wearing Trump hats beating this guy up? We'd still be seeing it, be on a never-ending loop. Can you imagine the potential race wars that would have begun over this? And the whole thing is fake. The whole thing is made up. Thank goodness this guy's not smart enough to pick the right camera. No, I did not fall. I am okay. I am gesticulating here. My watch thinks I fell again. It's actually a good feature. Uh, But since I don't fall, I don't know if it records a real fall. But if this if this if this hoax had been caught on on tape and played endlessly on every cable news network, uh, you don't even want to imagine. And that was the objective here, and that's why the media is disappointed because they were so hoping this was true, and they were so hoping there was video of this. So why do they keep falling for hate? They're not falling for anything. This is what they think America is already. Just got a funny note from a friend. Smollett's Nigerians doing the work Americans will no longer do. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Smollett. Okay, I thought that's what it would be. My instincts were that it was Jussie Smollett. But I heard somebody in the drive-bys calling it Smollett, and I figured, well, they're the professionals. They know I should have known better. Are the Nigerians uh, are U.S. citizens? Well, there goes that funny line. Born and raised in Chicago. But they went back to Nigeria. That's why I thought they were Nigerian. And so I guess there are Americans that'll do work Americans won't do anymore, and Jesse Smollett found them. Joe in Metropolis, Illinois, I'm glad you called, sir. You're up first today. Hi. Yes, I'm on the phone. Thanks, Rush. My question is, where is the outrage? Where is the, the real fierce outrage with over this Jesse Smollett fraud? fraud? You have to think, here's what he accused Chicagoans of. He accused Chicagoans of being white, homophobic, 
racists who are willing to put a noose around a man's neck, and uh, it turns out it's all phony. I, I was a Chicago policeman for years, and I worked in that same detective unit that ferreted this out. And he was never going to get away with it. But now, how about the politicians, the news media, and the celebrities, like, like Good Morning America and The View, where they say, oh, it's just sad. I agree with you a hundred, I, I, I agree with you a thousand percent. And I think one of the, I, I mentioned this in the, in the first hour, everybody says, why do people fall for, they don't fall for anything. This is what they think America is. So the answer to your question is, well, okay, this may have been phony, but it's happening for real in other places. It's happening all over America. Modern day lynchings. Wait a minute. What's modern about it? If the lynchings are happening all over the place, why put the qualifier in for why modern day? But you're exactly right. Chicago has just been accused, especially this is a high rent neighborhood where this guy shacks up. Chicago's just been accused of, uh, of, of, of having this kind of people that live there. And there isn't the reaction to the fakeness of this and the made a oh hum. They're just sorry. They're not embarrassed. They're not embarrassed that they they signed up for this. All these celebrities and all these news people and news networks, they're not embarrassed because they're convinced it's happening anyway. May not have been right this time. Just like the rape story at that, I guess, wherever it was, UVA, Rolling Stone story. After it was found to be a hoax, totally made up, the woman that wrote the story said, well, this may not have been true, but it's happening everywhere, and I'm happy I raised awareness to the issue. Um, imagine if he had succeeded in getting video of this fake attack, and he makes himself out to be Rodney King II. We would still be seeing so you. What, what, what do you think that would have done to Chicago and the rest of the country? This was so damn serious and bad. Nancy Pelosi. Remember, do you, do you know what her tweet was after the Jesse Smollett? Here's what she tweeted. Uh, well, where is it here? Da, 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 da. Well, she's removed it. I'm just trying to find it. Here it is. The racist, homophobic attack on Jesse Smollett is an affront to our humanity. No one should be attacked for who they are or whom they love. I pray that Jesse has a speedy recovery and that justice is served. May we all commit to ending this hate once and for all. She has removed the tweet. It is... Poof, it's gone. Like, it's like it never happened. And it's not the drive-by media reporting it. No way! Drive-by media not even reporting this. It's others tracking it down.